You're listening to She's the Business Podcast. My prediction for 2023 is that the thought leaders, the true thought leaders, are going to rise above the crowd. And this is going to become something that's so powerful for service-based businesses. But I think that what it takes to be a thought leader in 2023 will be quite different from what we've been used to in the past, in previous years. So today's episode on unpacking. What does this really mean? What does it mean to be a thought leader in 2023 and beyond, what are the things that are different from what we used to think of as a thought leader and how you can leverage this in your business? You can start right now and today to become that thought leader that's rising above the crowd, that's really drawing your people to you in 2023. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm your host, Jessica Osborne, and in my 23 years of business and marketing, I've built many brands to become multi-billion dollar companies. And just in the last 10 years, I've built two online businesses of my own from my dining room table with two little babies running around at my feet. I've made it my mission to inspire you to get out of your own way and become the successful business owner who's living the lifestyle you really desire without all the hustle. This is She's the Business podcast made by women for women. This is your weekly dose of motivation and inspiration. Today's episode is all about what it takes to be a thought leader in 2023. Now, as we're heading into the tail end of 2022, I always start thinking, you know, what is it that the new year is going to bring? What's going to be important for us in the online space in the next year? Because, wow, our world is evolving super, super quickly at the moment. And it's always good to have that forward vision, I think, of you know, really what it's going to take. So some of the trends that I've noticed over the last year or two years that have been highly driven by the whole COVID epidemic around the world is an explosion of people starting their own online business, moving into the online space. And of course, for those of us in services businesses, uh, where you have some expertise, you've got a profession that you've been doing in your career, in your, in your role, that's one of the easiest ways to start a business because you don't need a lot. Literally, you're selling your brain, you're selling your knowledge, you're selling your expertise. It's so easy just to get yourself registered as a business and to create a service offering and then to start offering it. You don't even need a website. You don't need any social media. You don't actually need any of that to get started, which means that it's such a low barrier to entry, which is fantastic. And for many of us, it means we're no longer tied to that old archaic model of the corporate world, the nine to five job, the thing that you had to, you know, give up so much of your life for going on the commute and spending time away from your family and time that you didn't want to be spending working, to be fair. So anyway, we all know that, right? You, you already know that there's been an explosion. You've probably noticed it yourself. You've also probably noticed, as I have, a huge influx of people just out there trying to drum up clients. Like they're trying really, really hard. And there are two main types of people that you might see. One of them I call the hustler. This is the person who's really focused on sales methods. So they're dropping into your inbox, um, unannounced, uninvited, um, you know, pitching to you to try to get you to respond to say, hey, yeah, sure, let's have a chat about your service. But you haven't actually said you wanted it. So there's those types of ones. Then there are the type that are doing marketing, a lot of marketing, but I tend to call these, most of these ones, a treadmill marketer because they're just doing a lot of marketing activity that's not actually resulting in clients or very rarely is it resulting in the right type of client who is inquiring. So there's a lot of activity happening in that marketing space, like, you know, posting on Instagram, posting on TikTok, doing loads and loads of social media, maybe writing tons of blogs and then thinking, where are these? clients why isn't it happening which brings me to today's topic you know thought leadership I think is going to be absolutely critical for those of us in services businesses who really want to you know rise above the crowd who want to be one of the standouts who want to become a go-to person who want to be known for what it is that you do the way to do that is clearly you know it's really about thought leadership now 
is such a funny term because when I started in marketing back in the 1990s, it had a very different meaning, I think, than what it actually has today. So I wanted to share with you my thoughts, my views on what it takes to be a thought leader in 2023. You can start applying it now, of course, if you like, but you know, it's going to be different than what we have traditionally thought of as thought leaders. So let's make this compare and contrast thing. So I think the old form of a thought leader was somebody who was very well educated, very learned, and they would tell us information. They would tell us what they know. <laughs> they would become the leader of the thought, right? So it was something that we would perceive as quite academic at times, or they would be very professional in what they would do, which would mean that would dovetail into, I guess, how they would present themselves, the types of things they would do. They would speak at events and, and do lots of activities like that, but in a way where they're, they're pretty much standing up and just speaking their knowledge at you. Now, that is what I would class as the old form of thought leadership, and there's really nothing wrong with that. However, to really succeed as a thought leader in today's society, there is a few very subtle but very important differences. Well, actually, I'm going to say we're actually going to flip it on its head. <laughs> so a thought leader in today's world, not only is somebody who, yes, has expertise, and let's touch on that for a moment. I'm going to go off down a little tangent, Ali. An expert doesn't mean that you are the expert on the topic and you're the, the world-renowned expert on it to be an expert. You can be an expert in lots of things. And when you look up the meaning of expert in the dictionary, it actually just means somebody who has experience or knowledge in a certain area. So it doesn't mean that you need to have qualifications and formal degrees and things, which are all well and good, but they don't necessarily make you an expert. Um, they can help, but often it is your experience that leads to your expertise, because when you're speaking from experience, you really are that person who is speaking from a place of knowing deeply, not just something that you've learned that someone else has said, but you have learned it yourself from the doing. So a lot of us in the world that we're helping people with something that we have learned um, through our experience, you, know, you are experts in your area. You really are. And I, I hope that you take that on board. <laughs> so to become a thought leader, it actually doesn't take a lot. It's just about how you're sharing this expertise that you have with your audience. And there are really three things I think that boil down to um, what makes a new form of thought leader and what makes a really, really successful and powerful one. The first one is that you have a message that inspires your audience, it inspires their thoughts. So it helps them to form their own thoughts. It inspires ideas, generates ideas in your audience's brain, and it inspires them to act. Now, you could gloss over that, but I want you to just sit with that for a moment and have a think about it. There's a big difference in telling someone information and sharing knowledge in a way that gets them to take it on board and see it for themselves. And this is all done in the way that it's delivered. So most of us grew up in a world where we've had, you know, been to university, we've had lecturers, we've had teachers, all of these things, and they are all doing the old school form of telling us information, you know, writing texts, if it's um, presenting or if it's writing, you know, they're very much, here's some information and they're just telling us this is what it is, very factual. But to bring someone on board to your thinking, and usually if you're a thought leader, you've actually not just telling people facts and information, but you've formed something a little bit more deep than that, an, an opinion about it, a deeper insight. That is what brings these incredible insights to your audience, right? But the way that you do it is in how you're delivering this. So instead of just telling people that this is the way it is and expecting them to just believe you because you're the expert, we've got to share the information in a way that they can see it for themselves. And that's all in the delivery of it. It means that instead of just telling people things, you're going to ask them questions. You're going to ask them to look around and notice have you seen this? Have you noticed that? Can you think of a time where something happened like this? Well, this is what it means. So you're helping them to draw conclusions and maybe shift their thinking where they used to think A equals B. Now they're going to think, oh, okay, maybe A doesn't equal B, maybe A equals C. So you're guiding their thoughts as opposed to just sharing your own knowledge. So that to me is 
key number one. So powerful because when you can do that, when you can actually share your knowledge in a way that it imparts the learning into someone else, then that creates such a deeper connection their connection to you and and actually learning from you just the whole experience of them even being involved with what it is that you're saying goes to that so much deeper level so you really will stand out as a thought leader someone who they want to follow because they're like wow every time I listen to this person or I read something that they write it's powerful it gets me to think differently it inspires me you know when they have those feelings then you're going to be, be the person that they want to follow so that's number one. Number two is the ability to, I'm not going to say dumb down your expertise or your, um, your information that you're helping to share with people, but to really meet your audience where they are right now. So this is something I see so often. We've got really intelligent, experienced people out there who can see straight away because you've got so much experience in this, you can see the problem that someone has. You can see why they're in that state. You can see straight away what the cause of it is. But if that person doesn't know what the cause is, then speaking to them about the cause isn't going to land with them because they're really not going to think it's even relevant. So one of the better ways to do it is to think, well, how can I simplify down all of this that I know and actually just really help someone by meeting them where they're at in my content? So what I mean by that is instead of talking to them, helping to share, well, this is what the problem is and, and telling them what their problem is or, or why or what's caused it, actually talking to them about where they're at right now, talking to them about where how it could change, helping them to see that there are there is another way. There's a way out of that that they may not have realized yet. But to speak also in a language that makes it so easy for them to understand. So that's going into my point number three. Often we think that to be a thought leader, we've got to be really professional and speak in proper terms and, and write with all of the correct terminology and, and jargon. Otherwise, other people may criticize us. Maybe we're even worried about our peers in our industry thinking that we're dumbing it down too much or or that we're not we're not as well learned as as the other ones but when we do that we're actually missing the opportunity to connect with our audience because for most of us we're busy right now you're listening to this podcast and you might be driving in your car you might be making dinner you might be out on a walk there are other thoughts happening in your brain and I know that you're not 100% connected 100% of the time while you're listening. You're coming in and out. You're having little moments of thought. Then you're coming back to what I'm saying. And that means that if it's hard work, if you actually have to really listen to what I'm saying and follow along and focus 100% of the time, I'm going to lose you much faster than if I'm just speaking in a way that's like a normal conversation, like we're sitting down together with a cup of coffee, which I have here with me right now, um, you know, and, and just having a chat about things. Because the most complicated concepts we can speak about in much more simple language. Like imagine if you had to talk to a five-year-old or a six-year-old and tell them about what this is instead of speaking to adults, you would use much more simple language. So try that next time. See how that works for you. Because to be honest, it doesn't make you any less professional. And I think this is the one thing that so many people have a hang up about. Oh, if I start speaking in simple language, then I'm not going to sound very clever or intelligent. People are going to judge me, except that we don't. And I'm, here's why. Because when we're reading along or listening, and the words that you're using are words that we understand instantly. We don't have to think about it. When they're short sentences, when it's really easy to absorb and consume what it is that you're saying, then we're thinking about what it is you're saying. We're not thinking about the words that you're using to describe it. So we have no judgment because we're actually really interested in your message as opposed to the delivery of it. And it's only your own self, your critical self, that inner critic inside your brain that's telling you stories such as, you know, people will think that you're less professional or that you're not as um, well educated if you're using more simple language. That is purely a thought that exists only inside your brain. And, you know, I can say this with complete certainty because it used to be me as well. Um, you know, certainly I remember 
many times, you know, I don't know if any of you have ever worked in government, but there's so much jargon in there. You've got to speak in a certain way. Um, you know, there's various industries and companies that I've worked in where IT is a classic one. Oh my goodness, there's so much jargon and people speak a certain way. And, you know, if someone can stand up there and ramble off all these important sounding words, then some people used to think, wow, they sound like they really know what they're talking about. But guess what? None of us knew what it was that they were saying. So when you're in a business and you're speaking to someone, you want them to buy from you. You don't want them to just sit there and think, well, that's a lot of interesting words, but I don't know what they're saying. Maybe they might be impressed by all your words, but they're actually not going to be brought along with the message that you're trying to deliver, the action that you want them to take because they don't understand it. And let's not make the mistake of thinking that, oh, my audience is, they're intelligent people. You know, I'm speaking to highly educated people, so they're going to understand me. I know from so many years of, you know, working with copy that even the most intelligent ones of us, we still really appreciate easy to consume, easy to read text. And it's been proven over and over again. You just can look at the stats where copy that's more highly converting um, easier to consume, you know, that that works so much better. You'll have so many more people taking the action because they don't have to think hard or work hard to follow along. You think about the last time that you read something that was, it, it just felt effortless to read it. Maybe it was a blog post, maybe it's an article and you're reading it, you're thinking, oh, I just love this. Oh, it's so insightful. You're really drawn along with it. Go back and have a look at how it was written because I guarantee you they used language that you didn't have to question there were no doubts or question marks in your mind about what does that mean or I hang on I have to go back and reread that a second time if that was happening then you wouldn't have enjoyed that article as much because it was hard work so when you can write in a way that people can read it first time understand it and and really get it as well understand what it is that you're saying then you're going to have powerful powerful content that people will want to take action from so that's it. That was my piece on thought leadership for 2023. I think this is going to be a huge, a huge thing that those of us in the online space, whether you're a coach, whether you're a, a consultant or, you know, an agency owner, you're providing services, you're professional online, whatever that is that you do, if you are then able to elevate yourself and in, into that space of becoming a thought leader in the new way, you don't need a suit. You don't need professional um, slides. You don't need any of that. You actually just need to connect really deeply with your audience. And if you go back and have a listen to this episode again, if you want to now write down the three different ways that I think that this comes about. So the three things to think about in how you become that thought leader, then you're going to be able to rise above the others, the crowd, because most people are still doing it the old way. They're still telling you information, thinking, telling you what they think you want to hear. But if you can share with people your expertise and experience and help them to shift, help them to change their perspective, then you're now in the space of being a thought leader. And that is what is going to be the make or break thing. I think more so than ever, 2023 and beyond. Um, be really interested to see how it all pans out. But I hope you found this episode super helpful because we should all, well, no, I'm not going to say you should be, but many of us do want to be that go to person. We do want to be that one who's perceived as somebody who's got something really great to share, got really good expertise. And this is how you do it. So if you found it useful, I would love you to leave me a review. Um, if you're on Apple, you know, drop down, check the five stars and then leave me a short review. Let me know how what you thought was interesting in this episode, what the key point was or the takeaway that you've taken out of it for today. Uh, or take a screenshot of this episode and, and post it on Instagram stories, tag me, jessica.osborne and share it with me that way. I'd love to see you know, your favorite episode, if it's not this one, maybe it was another one that you loved even more, but I'd love to hear from you and see what that is. So until next time, thank you for listening. 
If you're not easily attracting the sort of clients that really excite you and you're tired of needing to hunt for clients online, you're done with relying on those inconsistent referrals to scrape by month to month, or you're sick of wasting money on ads that don't work, then you're going to absolutely love the free training that I have put together specifically for you. It is called Five Keys to Clients on Tap and you'll spend just an hour with me in this free online training and walk away with my proven formula to magnetically attract a consistent stream of high value clients without wasting your energy on the latest social media trend or sending cold DMs. You're going to be able to figure out how to hit your profit goals within the time and hours that you want to work so that you've got more guilt-free family time, free time or me time, whatever it is for you. Head to jessicaosborne.com slash TMF to register now for this training. That's jessicaosborne.com slash TMF, which stands for The Magnetic Formula. And I'm going to share it with you. See you there.